Soil texture is a very important property of soils. Texture generally refers to how rough or smooth something is, and soil texture specifically refers to how much sand, silt, and clay is in a given soil sample. If a person wanted to determine how much sand, silt, and clay was in a soil sample, they could send it off to a soil testing laboratory, or with practice, they could learn how to determine texture by feel. I'm standing in a soil pit that was dug with a backhoe for a visit from some school children. This certainly isn't required for doing texture by feel. You can use any kind of soil sample. Certainly one dug from a field or from a flower bed using a spade or a knife would be fine. So I'm going to start by taking my spade and digging a little bit of soil out of the top part of this soil pit, which we are out of the soil profile, which we would call topsoil. Put my spade down and break it up a little bit. I'm starting out with moist soil. Break up some of the pieces, which we would call aggregates or peds. I'm going to add a little bit of water from a spray bottle. And the goal is to work this up into, until it has the texture of, say, or the consistency of Play-Doh or putty. So take and mash out all of these chunks with our hands until we get it to that right consistency. Now if you add too much water, um, it, it'll be too soft. It'll, be, it'll just mush and stick to your hands so you can add more soil. Grab a little more soil and add it. Or you could simply set it in the sun and let it dry out just a little bit. It, it's, it dries out very fast in the sun, so it, it would just take a minute or two. We want to take and work all of the chunks out of the soil so that it becomes smooth with the consistency of, of silly putty or Play-Doh and all of the chunks are worked out of it so it's very smooth, as smooth as possible. And if your soil contained rocks, big rock fragments, something greater than two millimeters, you would want to remove those first with a sieve. So now I've worked the soil up into the right consistency and I'm ready to try to make the ribbon. And so what I'm going to do is take this ball and press it between my thumb and my index finger, and you can do this on either hand, your left or your right, whichever you prefer. And the goal is to press it and make a long continuous ribbon until the soil breaks under its own weight. The most important part about making a ribbon, this is what people have the hardest time with, is pushing it into the right part of your hand. The right place to put it is into the second knuckle. So the second knuckle down from the fingernail is your goal. If you take the thumb, pull it back, and press that soil, that putty, right into that second knuckle down from the fingernail, right into that V of your finger. And so push it out and then kind of unstick both fingers, the index and the thumb, and push it again. And push it out, like kind of backing down the tracks. And so you see how this ribbon is standing up underneath its own weight. That's how we're going to determine the length of ribbon, how long it can go until it breaks underneath its own weight. So we made a ribbon about, about two inches long, I'd say, before it broke from its own weight. And you might want to measure that with a, a tape measure if you were doing this out in the field or, or just learning, but that's approximately two inches. Ribbon length gives an indication of how much clay the soil contains. And the textural triangle can be split into three tiers. The uppermost tier is very clay. The center tier is moderately clay, and the bottom tier isn't very clay at all. So if I ribbon this out, and for this sample it's in excess of two inches long, this tells me that that sample is contains a lot of clay. If I were to break this off, a sample that was made that was more like wow one to two inches long might be in the center portion of the textural triangle, and if it broke after just a very short time, that would be on that bottom tier of the textural triangle. Now that I've determined the ribbon length, which is going to tell me something about the amount of clay in the soil, the next step is to break off a small pinch of our uh, texture ball, set that down over here, and then I'm going to put it into the palm of my hand and add water, kind of make a pool or a pond of water in my palm. Add plenty of water, 
and then take your fingers from your other hand and from the opposite hand and rub that sample. By rubbing this sample, my goal is to answer the question, how gritty or how much sand does this sample contain? And really all that's necessary is to decide if it's very gritty, moderately gritty, or not very gritty at all. And that'll help us determine the class by using the textural triangle. Texture by feel is a skill that takes practice to learn. So don't be discouraged. Practice with samples from your fields or your flower beds and you'll get the hang of it in no time. A publication is available from your local extension office called Texture by Feel, so Texture by Feel, or if you're watching this on YouTube, the link to that publication can be found directly below the view screen.